And here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Ho, ho, ho. I'm John Miglosh for the WDMA. And we're going to be talking about direct mail today. And also generational work and all kinds of things like that. So hang on. But first, let's look over at the Barbour Christmas advertisement. Another one of the winners picked by John Evans at System 1. And let's enjoy this. Um, right off the bat, the, uh, the, um, the farmer's jacket is all beat up. Okay, probably waxed canvas or something like that and he ripped a hole in it he ripped a pocket and his dog sees it and wants to help him out and so we're going to see how that story unfolds her he gets the sheep and he says that the farmer's gonna freeze let's help the farmer so they they're cutting and sewing and fixing up a new jacket and waxing, re-waxing the jacket. Oh. But they burned it a little. And so he's pretty happy. They're pretty happy with it. And there it is, patched up. He really likes it. Yeah, and he zips it up and they had a mouse trap on it, zipper, and the sleeves fall off. And he snapped. Then the dog snaps his fingers and gets him a whole refurbished. Extend the life of your garment. It might be best to go to Baba. Okay, wax for life. So <laughs> you can actually send your jacket back and get it waxed, and you'll be all set. And that's how it works. But anyway, they're a lot of fun, and the claymation is awesome. Um, it gets the message across. I played it a little faster because it's a minute 30 seconds, okay? So now let's get over to the regular news and see what we got there. Okay, first I'm going to talk about the boomers are out, the zoomers are in. And as a boomer, I'm not out yet. <laughs> yeah, right? And other working world trends you may see in 2024. Data from Glassdoor suggests some rough trends ahead. Okay, um, benefits and equity and other stuff. But first, there's a nifty graph. And you can see the boomers starting in about 2000 have been declining steadily, right? And the zoomers are taken off. And they're about where the Gen Xers were in 2020, in 1995, rather. Okay, and the millennials... You know, they were about this point in about 2007. So it gives you a nice feel for how the the labeled generations are working with each other. One of the things you might also notice, there's two more things you might also notice. The boomers are going down pretty slowly, but faster than the silent generation did. But right now we're at about the same point. Right now, we're at the same point here, and you notice that the silent generation took a long time to peter out. Also notice that the, the dips in 2020 were much more severe for the millennials and the Gen Xers than the baby boomers. There's almost no dip at all, right? I mean, they were on their way down anyway, but this is a significant dip for the millennials. And uh, the Gen Xers... Or the Gen Zs didn't dip much either. It's interesting to see. The ones going up fast and the ones going down the most, neither of them moved much. Okay, so if you aren't job hunting, you might want to go to Glassdoor and just read the reviews of companies near you and see the entertainment value. I've never actually gone and seen if there's any reviews of my company. <laughs> Probably should. <laughs> if you're searching, it's useful but terrifying. Um, the author here, the author's, Olivia and Ben, one said they they got an offer letter from a CEO who was who was described as a rudderless, spineless talking head. Okay, so Gen Zs won't top the list until 2040, which will give them time to brush up on their basic workplace etiquette, which is something that like showing up, which is something that this article, this linked article in the in here will take you to. Okay, there's going to be Fewer 401k and dental plans, 
uh, fewer gym memberships and phone reimbursement, less tuition and commuter services, but you might get fertility treatments and adoption assistance, parental leave, and mental health support. Us boomers, did we get mental health support? I say no, we never did. <laughs> and we probably should have. That's what my kids say. You need you need whatever it is. I don't know what they I don't know what they think I need, but I'm sure it's something like that stuff. Okay, equity handouts peaked in 19 in 2021. Um, I told my kids it's easier to get equity from your dad than it is from your boss. <laughs> they still didn't want to work with work for me much, except the style consultant did a little bit. Okay, work-life balance ratings have remained stable for most uh, job positions, but middle managers at large companies have plummeted. So hug your middle manager, and if you'd like the entire workforce workforce Workplace Trends Report, which came out a couple of weeks ago. It will be up on the WDMA.org in the uh, show notes, which is up there every day. I think it's in the members only. So you have to subscribe, which is free. And I'll probably send you a note, say hi. Or you can join and support this crazy mission that we're on to support direct mail in all of its aspects. Okay, also... Uh, here's a, a lovely little article by Amelia Jacob from Tech Bullion, which I have not read before, but I do search, you know, on the direct mail search words and find anything I can. Um, in an era when digital communication is often hailed as the king of convenience, I thought that was a really good that was a really good way to characterize digital, you know. And it has its pluses and minuses. The plus is it keeps streaming at you all day long, everywhere you go, on every device. But there's also the convenience that if you ignore it, it throws itself away. <laughs> you don't really have to read all those emails. You can. J you don't even have to delete them. I never delete emails, almost never, uh, except for the most maybe the most crooked phishing and spammy stuff. But unless it you know, seems clearly offensive or illegal, I just mark it as red. And I know how on Gmail to mark like hundreds of them as red at the same time. So anyway, um, this article delves into the world of direct mail services for business. And uh, I looked up Amelia, and I don't think she has very few followers on LinkedIn. She's, a, lot of the, a lot of these writers don't see much value in LinkedIn, I have to say which is, I suppose, their choice, right? Um, so we'll reach out to Amelia and send her a connection invitation for this nice article. But she, I don't think she has a lot of background in direct mail, but she did do some research and put together a very, very nice... You know, I would give her more credit than the direct mail veterans who put out articles with all sorts of meaningless statistics and quote this study or the DMA statistics... Uh, ANA report, and don't ever set up a, a real test. And I went off the rails a little bit. I apologize for yesterday. Um, we're going to make that into a YouTube short, I think, um, because I felt strongly about it. But if you missed it, you should go back and, and check out yesterday's, especially from the last half on or so, where I get talking about the, uh, uh, the uh, Print United Expo results okay so you can check that out um so a couple of things that direct mail is is best at personalization direct mail allows you to tailor your message in a way that resonates deeply with the recipient so i'm working on one that's related to water properties and we can actually rent the list of people who live within 300 feet of a river or lake and we can get, for just a little extra, we can get the name of the lake. So we can target individual lakes, maybe where we do a lot of business or whatever. And we can, and we can make it ridiculously personalized. In addition, we can have real human beings address the letter. And so we can make it folksy and say, you know, I, I worked with this company and they really did a great job. And if you're thinking of doing this, 
these people seem to be servicing our lake the best of anybody and you can input the lake you know green lake or whatever it is man i mean everybody knows it's a little bit hokey but still you go wow whoever put this together at least they knew what they were doing it shows some effort and it shows that they're interested in my business right so that is a way to significantly enhance engagement now we know that direct mail we know who got mailed we know it got delivered we know it went to a decision maker because not everybody can throw out the mail we know they had to look it over they had to touch it they had to feel it open it in many cases they had to engage with it at a higher level because your brain has 10 times more touch sensors than visual sensors that even when you pay attention to a digital ad if you pay attention you still haven't got that level of engagement that uninterested recipients have with mail and over time if you mail repeatedly within your trading area you get the influencing impact of mail the memory impact of mail and eventually you get the ROI of mail right highly impactful highly memorable and highly effective right okay so uh, we also can target market so for example we can rent lists by the lake or river that you live on you know so that we it, it, what people lose sight of when they think about personalization is if you can if you can rent the list you can personalize with the list information if you can't rent the list as I was working on a financial one and I was thinking of why would people buy borrow money and I thought well you know maybe they want to fund their daughter's wedding or maybe they want to bring mom over from the old country <laughs> or maybe they want to take a vacation with grandpa and take the whole family on a cruise or something that you know time is running out right for grandpa <laughs> especially if the kids come over and sneeze all over them. Uh, that could never happen. So, you know, I, but I can't rent those lists. I can't rent, I mean, I could rent wedding planners. I suppose wedding people look into fun weddings, but, you know, it's going to be such a small number. So basically, it's, it's hard to personal. I can, I, can, I can make up stories about how this financial company helped us with this or that or another thing. But unless I've got the list down, I really shouldn't be personalizing too, 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 uh, too, you know, seriously. Anyway, direct mail, when done right, doesn't just reach an audience. It speaks to them, making them feel understood and valued, right? Even if it's a little hokey, it's not too creepy. Okay, measurable success in analytics, okay? Um, um, <laughs> I think it's Olivia here. No, Amelia. Amelia says... Amelia says that you can track things with QR codes and response tracking. But the biggest factor that works in direct mail's favor is, remember, number one, we know who got mailed. You know, the problem with QR codes is, if I'm reading it on my computer, which is where I read most of my email, for example, I can't scan, I, or if I'm reading it on my phone, I can't scan a QR code on my phone. Now, I can scan a QR code if it's in the mail, because it's different than my phone right but I might just as soon type in the URL you know if I'm watching if I'm if I'm working at my desk and I get a mailer you know like here's Ryan Reynolds he sent me a Christmas card this year because I'm a I'm a Mint Mobile subscriber I get a lot of stuff from Ryan he's a good buddy of mine anyway but uh, if I'm on my computer I might just type the, the URL say Mint Mobile slash offer or whatever it is if I do that the tracking is lost, except if I buy something, right? If I buy something, we can track that response back to the mailing, even if I didn't use the QR code or didn't use a tracking code or whatever. And that's another value that people lose sight of, okay? Integrating with digital. Yeah, you can do, you can start with informed delivery for no charge. In fact, you get a postal discount if you use informed delivery. You can connect the e an email about what came in the mailbox, 
your mailing piece. You can even take a four color picture of your mailing piece and stick it into informed delivery. You can even put a little response device in there so that they can click there. They don't even have to go to their mailbox to find out about the offer. Imagine that. You can do that. Not only is it free, but it's a postal discount sometimes of the year. It doesn't, it isn't always a thing, but I think it's a thing at the moment or in early January. Uh, Summer Gould had an article about that and we talked about it. So it's in the, it's in the previous episodes and you can look up Summer Gould and find it. Um, and so mail in some ways has a clearer picture of return on investment. And if you're interested in machine learning and AI, what mail gives you that other media doesn't is we can identify because of the high level of engagement, we can identify people who engaged with our offer. Basically, everybody who receives it has to get to at least throwing it away, which means a higher level of engagement than any media, mass media, which you don't even know if I'm watching the TV or I went to get a sandwich or if I'm paying attention to my cell phone while your commercial is running, which is the way I watch TV nowadays. Okay, but in mail, I have to engage because mail does not throw itself away right? Mail does not throw itself away. And so I have both the yeses who bought and the people who engaged and decided not to buy. And so I can identify the key decision factors, the key variables, the key demographic variables, whatever, that make the difference between the buyers and the non-buyers. Everybody else only has the buyers. And as Jeopardy or as uh, IBM found out when they tried to teach Watson how to play Jeopardy, they had 127,000 Jeopardy questions and they could keep track of which algorithm got the most wrong answers. Very, very important in machine learning and AI. The data set is everything, okay? So uh, when you integrate direct mail, you actually come up with things that digital can't give you. Okay, and all that leads to cost effectiveness and high ROI. I just wrote an article, a blog post for a, a printing company, and I explained in there some of the ways that mail, because of its high trackability, you know, we can backtrack it uh, and identify even the buyers who came in through other channels. You know, maybe they were lazy, and instead of doing the QR code, they said to Google, you know, hey, look up this website, look up this company, right? Now you pay double. You're, now you're going to pay Google pay-per-click and you're also going to pay for the mailing that actually caused the effect. You can't help what people are going to do, but at least you can track it back to that mailing piece. Otherwise, Google's going to get all the credit. Okay, so while initial costs might be higher than some digital methods, the response rates and engagement levels often outweigh these expenses. Variable data printing allows for high personalization without significantly increasing the cost. And direct mail, uh, you know, there, there's, the, it, you know, paper is the most recyclable thing there is on on Earth. So um, all printers recycle the the trim and the leftovers. So uh, really is a, a, a sustainable industry. Plus printing is done on paper, which is from trees, which are a harvestable renewable, sustainable resource. There's more trees in America now than there were at the, you know, 100 years ago. Okay, direct mail, mailing, mail printing and mailing services can significantly enhance your communication efforts by leveraging targeted messaging, integrating with digital strategies and being cost effective and environmentally friendly. There you go. Don't forget and don't forget the power of personal touch. I think it's a really good article. So thank you for that, Amelia. And I hope you write some more. Have a great day. Like and share. Your friends will know you're smart. Bye-bye.